Tonight, businesses hit hard by July's flooding are dealing with more of it again. Montpelier City officials say businesses are reporting water coming into their basements. And some of them hadn't even reopened since the last one. Jessica Tara joins us now. Jessica, what's taking so long? Business owners questioned if they would have to relocate or even close their businesses altogether. And some are blaming the building's owners. This process has been grueling, humbling, uh, frustrating. Jenny Siebold of Rebel Heart and Pink Shutter has been working relentlessly to get her store back and running like it used to. But her plan isn't going the way she thought it would. You know, just going through the flood to begin with, like seeing your dream that you've created and invested your whole heart and hands and sweat and dollars into wash away. That was really intense. Not only is she going through a hard time, but so is Bobby Rome of Rome on Langton Street. They both happen to be tenants of Vermont Rental Solutions. It's been really daunting, to say the least. Rome says it's been a difficult process to try to bring her store to life again. Five months later, still not being open is really difficult, and it's been stressful. You know, a lot of tears, a lot of frustration. Um, it's been really hard. She's been frustrated with her landlord, telling us fixes weren't done fast enough, and she's still been paying rent. She's in the talks with the landlord to try to find a deal. I just felt like I was already losing so much money because we weren't able to be open that to pay rent on top of it felt like it was just adding insult to injury. I reached out to Vermont Rental Solutions for an on-camera interview, but they did decline. But they did email us a statement saying materials and labor shortages held the Pairs, and that moving electrical, heating, replacing the floor, it can add a lot of additional work to the project. Also, when a 400 square foot space opens up and people wonder why a 4,000 square foot space is not open yet shortly after, it's evident they are unaware of what this kind of rebuild entails. On the other hand, Sarah DeFelice owns Bailey Road. She got her store up and running two months after the flood and is taking advantage of the shoppers looking for the deals of the festive season. DeFelice says the good relationship with her landlord is the reason why she was able to open quickly. I feel like some stores in town, it's almost like butting heads with the landlord, and this was definitely how can we help each other? We're in this together. Tim Heaney of Heaney Realtors says getting help from the outside was beneficial. Good group of contractors we work with, and we found others that were willing to help, and uh, we've just been, we're still working on it. You know, it's what, five and a half months later, and we still have four to six crews a day working. So it's an ongoing effort. A lease is a contract. Jared Carter of Vermont's Law and Graduate School says it is difficult for tenants to do anything beyond what's provided in the written lease. And so that means it, it could be very hard, unfortunately, for tenants um, who are dealing with the impacts of the flood uh, to to force their landlords to, to, you know, get things repaired by a certain time or to withhold rent if things aren't repaired by a certain time, unless that's in the lease provision or there's some sort of evidence of, of fraud or wrong dealing, those sorts of things perhaps. But as a general principle, it's gonna be very difficult, unfortunately, for a commercial tenant to um, you know, force a landlord to do anything beyond what's provided in the written language of the lease. As for Rome, she says she hopes to have her store open again in March after all the hassle. While Siebold is considering moving, she says she wants to stay because of the people in the city. I know so much more about my community. I know when babies are born, I know when spouses die, I know when people get married or engaged or promoted. Siebold is optimistic to open in February. In the studio, Jessica Tara, Channel 3 News.